Hey guys, Ron here, and we finally made it. I was waiting until the soundtrack was officially released to upload this video, but it seems like since the DLC will probably add quite a bit more tracks, the OST won't be out for some time. But it's okay, cause there are already so many amazing themes in this game that I wouldn't know where to place new ones. This is the soundtrack that is the hardest to review, mostly because it's a soundtrack that many people were paying close attention to and actively talking about, more than any other Pokemon soundtrack that I can think of. People have their favorite themes and there are so many standout and diverse tunes that it's difficult to even compare them. It seems like the consensus is that, while the games themselves were controversial, the soundtrack is a fan favorite, and I agree that it's on par with the rest of the franchise. It's not my personal favorite, but Game Freak didn't drop the ball and in fact some of these tracks have highs that surpass any theme in previous games. While the music was always a giant factor in my Pokemon experience, to many, this was the first time they even acknowledged the music. Because in this game, the music and sounds you hear help elevate every scene and battle and are an indisputable part of the experience. This is one of the many Pokemon music lists that I've made, so by now it's customary to acknowledge the fact that I will talk over the music and give you my opinion of the tracks as they play, but I will shut up whenever a theme starts playing my favorite part. The music of the Pokemon franchise really is the biggest part of my life. It brings me the most joy, so I want to help spread it. I hope the words in this video inspire you to go and listen to the full soundtrack on your own time and develop your own top 20. Of course, the title screen music playing right now is an honorable mention, and considering the game focuses on the Pokemon League itself more than any other Pokemon game in the past, it was a genius move picking the Hall of Fame music as one of the region's leitmotifs. A leitmotif is a reoccurring theme that you can hear throughout an entire soundtrack. It's a melody you hear in multiple compositions, usually binding and associating them with each other, and Sword and Shield has the most leitmotifs out of any Pokemon game. It's the other reason this soundtrack is so hard to rate, cause so many themes partially or completely share a melody with another track. At times, it hinders the OST a bit, but most of the time it elevates the soundtrack as one of the most meaningful in the entire franchise. The first few entries are a great example of this. Number 20 Route 3 and the first wild area. Honestly, so many tracks could have been in this spot, and many were as I began refining the list, but this theme was so clearly beautiful and melodic, and that's kind of what I'm looking for in video game music. There are tons of themes in this game that don't have a clear melody and I, I love them, but they're not the kind of tracks I fall in love with. I'm not in love with Route 3 as much as the other themes in this game, but it undeniably contains the aura, atmosphere, and sound of the Gala region. The way it shares a crescendo with the wild area theme is very indicative of how the wild area is just an extension of the roots in Galar. The powerful part you're about to hear right now is what allowed it to make the cut. It's brilliant and powerful. A lot of the themes in this game share some kind of melody, and that's why this theme, while relatively generic, perfectly represents the region. It flows from the previous areas and adds to it, kinda like how this theme rises and falls, like a ton of the music in this game. Perhaps it's the theme of the entire game in general, the cycle of rising and falling of champions, heroes, and time. Number 19 Postwick Just a heads up, this spot includes two other themes all three of which share Postwick's melody, and it's a beautiful melody, perfect for a hometown theme and is another great addition to the tradition of having nothing but great hometown themes. It's so peaceful and idyllic, almost slightly sad, which other hometown themes don't do. And what's cool about that is that this weird sadness I feel makes the theme more nostalgic, cause after all, nostalgia is a bittersweet feeling. It makes you long for home or greater times, and this theme captures that emotion. It's almost as if you're saying goodbye to your mother before going off on your journey. And Route 1 perfectly establishes the feeling of the beginning of your journey, one of the best first Route themes in the franchise. It's happy and upbeat, and a joy to listen to in any situation. Not too juvenile though. It still sounds sophisticated, which I like. Sometimes they're too childish like Kalos' Route 1 theme, but this one is flawless. But my personal favorite of the three is the Turfield version of the melody. Happier than Postwick, but not too in your face like Route 1. It really feels like you're arriving in a town that is somewhat familiar, considering it's basically a bigger version of your hometown, what with the rolling hills and sheep herding. A good mix of country and urban, which is why the electric guitar fits so well with this chill tune. It's relaxing and funky, electronic, but still traditional sounding. I love it, but the section I love the most in all three of these themes is the following crescendo in Postwick's theme. I've never heard a hometown theme go this high. It's ambitious, and I love me some high notes. It just gets higher and higher. It's great.
Number 18. Champion. For what it's worth, this intro is pretty epic. This theme is the most conflicted I've ever been about a battle theme, because it's both the worst champion battle theme, but it's also the most emotional for me. It would be weird giving it a higher spot considering most of the melody isn't original to this game. I'm a big fan of Leon, and I do want to say that this theme makes a whole lot of sense. Leon is the definition of success and fame in Galar, so it makes sense for the Hall of Fame to be his music with Galar's theme thrown into it. It really does go well with the atmosphere of the Galar Champion battle. This isn't some room on a remote island or mountain like other games, so it's not supposed to be an epic or intimidating theme. We know Leon, he's goofy and funny, but he represents more than just a champion. He represents the region itself, so you get to hear the entire region clapping, chanting, and singing along. While it was kind of a disappointment and is low on the list because it takes two whole minutes to get to the good part, the part I consider to be the best made me tear up a couple of times because it's beautiful. It's the crowd singing to the Hall of Fame tune that we've heard for decades. That's ridiculously cool and justifyingly emotional. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the most sentimental part of the entire game. Number 17 Battle Eternatus Phase 1 Speaking of themes that take some time to get to my favorite part, we have a theme that fits perfectly with the battle. I wouldn't want anything other than what I'm hearing now for the situation. It sounds like I'm discovering a monstrosity, a monster whose origin and purpose I cannot fathom. I'm horrified by what I'm seeing and intimidated by the fact that even Leon couldn't halt its actions. It's the most horror, sci-fi sounding theme in the game, and even visually as boss battle looking as it gets, un until shortly later. I almost forgot how epic the choir in the background sounds, and this is just phase one. Phase two isn't as good, I gotta admit, but that may be because of the drastic turn for the worst. The falling part and its theremin-like sounding music is breathtaking. I love how high and ominous it gets, like fear is overpowering us. Without this part, the theme wouldn't have made this list. It's my favorite. Number 16 Battle Max Raid This is the music that was perfectly made to fit every action that is about to be seen on screen, as if every part coincided with when you see the Dynamax Pokemon and when you're supposed to Dynamax your own Pokemon. It's intimidating, then epic, then playful, and then all of those things at once. It's not too serious as if you're saving the world, but not too hopeful sounding to undermine the tension and challenge. It's super hard to find the right balance, and they did. It's one of the most epic themes in the game, and I'm always glad to hear it. And it's still low on the list. That's how epic this soundtrack is. I love how it's basically a Dynamax version of the Wild Battle theme. It feels like it's about to burst with energy. The timpanis perfectly represent something big and hulking, just like they did in the Weather Battle Trio theme back in Hoenn. Every instrument was perfectly picked. From the main melody's feeble sounding synth reminding me of the small soul still inside the Pokemon, to the orchestra hits and everything else in the background that envelops the main synth, kind of like how Dynamax has been described as a projection with the small Pokemon still inside at heart. It's a well made theme with no real flaws. Number 15 Battle Macrocosmos Rose The intro to this song along with Rose's expression really indicates how this was his last resort. He isn't happy that he has to battle you, but is unleashing his wrath in order to save the region he loves. There isn't anything uplifting about this track. No hope, just urgency. It always seems like Pokemon has been shy to have a full on choir chanting in the background of a boss battle music. They've done it with Getsis, but that was one word, and Lysander's choir doesn't really say anything. 
we finally have a full Latin style chorus and it's beautiful. It's kind of surprising considering Rose is the least traditionally evil antagonist. He has good intentions and didn't really harm anybody, yet this sounds like the boss battle against the Antichrist. Regardless, it's exactly what we wanted for some time. It's only this low on the list because the parts without the choir are relatively average, but the theme achieves legendary status during its high points. Number 14 Battle Team Yell Captain God, I love the energy that comes from this theme and the high notes it reaches. Along with the chanting, the opening 40 seconds are perfect. It really sounds like Pierce is giving his all. And I'm honestly talking over my favorite part, but this theme is constantly evolving and throwing all new sorts of emotions into the mix. It really feels like an actual test of will, and I'm glad they decided to give Pierce his own battle theme, because there are pre-existing emotions that this guy is feeling as he battles you. You're the only guy who's stopping his plans of helping both his sister and the citizens of his hometown, who you're hearing chanting right now. Through this battle, he'll realize he was wrong and that we're all on the same side. Nothing's malevolent sounding about this theme, just overwhelming with purpose. It's turbulent and atmospheric. It fits perfectly and is in my opinion way better than the normal Team Yell battle theme, as it should be, I mean, he's the boss. When making a battle theme for a specific person, all I ask is that it accurately portrays the character through music, and this theme is as successful as can be in that respect. And the guitar has never sounded so crispy and vibrant than it does in this theme. It has life and soul. This solo is one of my favorites in the game. Combined with the synths, I feel the passion Pierce is feeling. Number 13 Route 6 and the second Wild Area Now these two themes share way more than the other Wild Area shares with Route 3's theme. Route 6 is practically a shortened version of the second Wild Area theme. It's not superior, but has all the good parts of the Wild Area theme in a more consumable package, so it's the one I go to when I want to listen to this melody again. It's breathtaking, definitely the right word to use. It feels like I'm looking over a vast open field from a cliff, like I'm climbing up a hill to reveal a breathtaking view. The bagpipes fit in more than any other instrument used in the soundtrack. Along with the Celtic harp, it's exactly what we expected from a root theme in Galar. And coupled with that adventurous sounding melody, it invokes the famous roots of previous generations. There is a shortage of root themes in this game, but this one rivals the best in the franchise. It's basically the climax of the game in music form. This is played when you're in the thick of it. By this point, you have a feel for the game and are ready to explore what it has in store. It's the number one theme I recommend showing anybody who wants to understand what the overworld of this game makes a Pokemon fan feel. While the overworld is not as good as people hoped, it's still a huge leap forward from previous titles, and the theme really does invoke a sense of wonder at what the future of Pokemon is gonna give us. A hopeful glimpse into the future. This theme is an indication of the positive side of Sword and Shield, the feeling of immersion with the Pokemon in the overworld, unlike what we've ever felt in Pokemon before. The Wild Area's full version of this track is beautiful and full of instruments that the Route 6 version doesn't have, so I actually would say that it is superior, and if you want to just get into the state of mind of what it means to be a Pokemon trainer, trekking through the wild, with Pokemon as far as the eye can see, you listen to this theme, one of the most deservingly long themes in the entire franchise. Number 12 Winding God, Winden is one of the hardest tracks in Pokemon to talk about. It contains its own original melody, but also the melody of the Gala region that can be heard in Motostoke. 
It constantly changes tempo, instruments, tune, vibe, and purpose. It's the most surprising theme. I did not expect this electronic of a theme for the Pokemon version of London, but it makes sense. It's basically futuristic and constantly moving, progressing, like the region itself. It rises and falls like most of the tunes in this game, and the instruments I'm hearing right now kinda sound like billboards or the notification jingles you hear on the tube or any form of public transportation. It's as if the music is leading you around town. It sets the mood for a city that is basically a road leading to the Battle Tower and Rose Stadium. It's as if this music is hyping all the trainers up for the tournament. It's admittedly more bustling sounding than the actual relatively empty streets, but it gets the spirit. This is what a Pokemon League town should sound and look like. It's a festival. It's a celebration of your journey. Almost like one of those future conventions or expos. That's exactly what this theme is trying to sound like. Would have worked perfectly for a Battle Frontier. It's super dramatic. Number 11. Battle Olina. Now this is the most underrated theme in the game. It's not the best, but definitely the most consistently immersive. There is no point in this battle theme in which I get bored. Either the bass is funky as can be, or the main melody is bopping. The violin is classy and beautiful, almost showing us Alina's normal state. Elegant and composed, ready to do anything Rose tells her and making sure all of his plans are successful. But now she's desperate and invoking the melody of her boss's music. This entire thing is basically the tune of Rose's encounter theme, which shows you how much Olina is dedicated to Rose. She is him, his last pillar of defense. To get to him, you have to get through her. It's honestly the most fun battling music in the game that is supposed to be serious and menacing, but it's actually jazzy and in your face. I personally love it. It reminds me of the melodies from previous generations, not as complicated as the battle themes in recent generations, which is nice for a change. It's straight to the point without a minute to build up. It's as blunt as Olina, a pleasant melody that goes hard. Number 10 Stow on side, now we're really getting into my personal top 10. All the following themes are ones that I went back and listened to on my own time over and over again. They're all 10 out of 10, and that includes Stone Side. It's the kind of tune I always want to hear in a Pokemon game. It's completely melody driven, but still atmospheric, calm and inviting, but not too obnoxious. Something that you can have fun listening to in the background, but also a theme that you can bop your head to and really get into the mood. It has high notes, but also mellow and chill guitar strumming. This is a completely acoustic tune for once. It sounds traditional, but still completely hip. Almost nostalgic, reminding me of previous tunes like Seafolk Village, but also very Mediterranean in general, which personally is nostalgic as a person whose family is from the Mediterranean area. It feels like home, and is the most comforting song in the game. It's one of these themes that really touches your soul, making you thankful for the game's existence. Number 9 Motostoke. Every region has its own undoubtedly best town theme, and this one takes the cake. It's a theme that stays perfect throughout the entire run. There is no part in this in which I get bored. The saxophones are filled with so much heart and soul, it's almost bursting. 
This is the sound of industry and innovation. This is the location the Pokemon Industrial Revolution probably started in, and is still in the forefront of Galarian life. It's the heart that pumps the blood of this region's entire society. The people in Pokemon of Galar work together to live a better life, and that's what this theme makes you want to do. It's constantly active, and the melody is always in the front and center, with steam and metal sound effects that perfectly blend into the beat of this track. It's not only a good tune, it's actually genius, and in my opinion, the number one theme in the franchise when it comes to representing the location it plays in. It effectively made its way up the chart of this franchise's greatest city themes, like Slateport, Azalea Town, and more. Number 8 Battle Battle Tower This is the hardest theme to convey my true feelings about. What you guys don't know is that I'm a huge fan of Toby Fox's music. The only full non-Pokemon video game soundtrack that I've ever bought is the Undertale soundtrack. I love it with all my heart and I've never even played Undertale. That's how big of a fan I am of the person who made this track. It fits in perfectly with Undertale's music. It would be in the top 3 if it was from that franchise, but it's not, and that's kind of the reason it's not number 1. The instruments don't sound like Pokemon instruments, they sound like a beta track. But other than that, the composition and arrangement is amazing. I'm so happy that it's in the game. It does sound like a post-game battle theme, which usually do sound unlike any other battle theme in the game, so it's fine that it doesn't perfectly match with the rest of the OST. super powerful and puts a smile on my face. It even matches the energy of a retired Leon. And the fact that it becomes extra beautiful and emotional on the second loop is a testament to Toby Fox's quality. It's a top-notch theme and the fact that it's number 8 means that the next 7 themes are among my favorite in the franchise. Number 7 Battle Gym Leader This is the hardest theme to talk about because it's everybody's favorite and has like 5 different versions. Normal, second Pokemon, last Pokemon, changing Pokemon, and then all of those in the tournament battles. I'm gonna have to shut up during so many awesome parts like this one. This theme really represents the best parts of this entire game. The Gym Leader battles and the Gym Leader themselves. They're the best that we've ever gotten in the franchise. They're fun and full of character, have awesome designs, and their battles are so engaging. The crowd, the stadium, and the music all come together to give us the best Gym Leader experience we've ever had. Every Gym Leader battle had me raise the volume and get into the face glued to the screen position. You know the one. I'm fully immersed every time this now iconic battle theme comes up. It's lower on the list than others would put it because it's personally not really melody driven. It's mostly about the beat. That's not a bad thing. It works and is the reason I love it, but it just means that at times it drags on a bit. But other than that, it's an example of how this game's soundtrack had so much effort put into it. It changes so many times and follows what's going on with the battle. The key change once you make a dent in their team is genius and introduces my favorite melody in the theme, this one. It really sounds like the kind of melody you'd hear at a sports game. Fluid, catchy and memorable, something that you can sing. Then, when the climax is introduced, and the crowd starts chanting along with the music, and they all begin to sing, is one of the best examples of world building in the franchise. Just like how in the real world we have football fans singing during the peak of the match, our Pokemon crowd feels real. It really makes you believe you're a famous Pokemon trainer. In my adulthood, my imagination isn't as active as it was when I was a child, so this extra boost in immersion really helps me feel like a kid again. All of this along with the extra push of Dynamax Pokemon makes these battles some of the best I've ever had. The Elite Trainer intro is part of this entry too. It gets right to the good part and I love it for its intensity. Listen.
Number 6 Um, yeah, I'm in love with Sonya. It, it's so hard not to be, and when they made an entire bop of an encounter theme for this A-plus character, it's almost impossible for the theme to not be associated with utter happiness in my mind. You know the blissful feeling you get when looking at someone you love? Listen to this. Pure infatuation. That's what this sounds like to me. It's not an exaggeration. We know her design is perfect, but all of her expressions, lines, cutscenes, and best of all, personality are entertaining. This theme translates into happiness for me. The instruments sound like heaven, and the melody is charming for its entire duration. There is no part of this theme that I dislike, and that's why it's so high on the list. An encounter theme being in the top 6? It's unprecedented. Okay, now we're getting to the themes that were at one point my number 1. All of them are A pluses, and Bade's theme is a good introduction to this top tier. You'd think he's a chill snob, but that engine swerving sound kinda indicates that he's an impatient guy who wants to get to where he's going as soon as possible, both physically and metaphorically. It makes sense, and what sounds like a person saying his name in the background right now, I take as an indication of his pride. This is the guy who is constantly disparaging others and is so prideful he doesn't think others are worth his time. This erratic and energetic theme is perfect for this guy. I'd say this theme is driven, like this overzealous twerk. It's almost like the theme is trying to get over with this battle already. Either speeding up or slowing down when Bade realizes that you're giving him more trouble than anticipated. This man has no respect, and the melody right now kinda sounds like Opelousa City, but most importantly, the Pokemon World Tournament Final Battle theme. In fact, its Gen 5-ness is a big reason I love it. Bass and synths like Gladion's battle theme combined with Hughes, it's the exact kind of sound I want when listening to a non-friendly rival. It's both intense and calculated. This guy is thinking, but maybe too fast to see what's important. It takes real talent to make a theme like this. It's got beat, melody, and meaning. It's beautiful. Number 4 Battle Hop This theme is a definition of a bop. It's bumping. It makes you want to hop. It's energetic and passionate, like Hop himself. It really makes you appreciate the art of video game music because it's a genre of music that, when done successfully, translates entire moods and characters into music. And Hop's battle theme is a perfect example. The horns are insane and the guitar is lively. It's excitement in the form of music. It's what makes this entire character arc and depression even more relevant. This guy is either happy or trying to be happy in the face of adversity. Almost like this theme is cheering him on. And the falling part kicks into gear and completes this perfect theme. Because at this point you realize the entire track never stops being Hop. It's fun to listen to all the way through. Listen to this. But it's his final battle theme that makes this theme enter legendary status and allowed it to surpass Bates' theme. The complete evolution from this eager boy ready to be the next champion with a humble theme cheering him on to a man who is now in front of a huge crowd with his biggest rival and they're basically cheering his name. It's terrifying, granted it kinda sounds like they were cheering my name when I first heard it since we share the same vowel and name structure, but the point still stands. This is the sound of true rivals giving it their all. And the part that'll appear once I stop talking, which is every sane person's favorite part, is one of the most emotional and just awe-inspiring moments in Pokemon music. The salsa vibe with the crowd clapping to the beat rivals so many famous Pokemon battle tracks. I almost cried watching this boy receive a bit of the fame he has been desperately craving his entire life. So listen to the music this guy deserves.
Number 3 Final Battle, Marnie So they added beautiful arpeggios in the beginning and then went straight to the, my favorite part of the battle theme with that guitar solo while the background music stays low. I already loved this battle theme before but then Marnie's battle theme added two of my favorite music tropes right at the start to make my favorite intro in this game. Marnie's battle theme is the most balanced in this entire game which makes so much sense since I already thought her personality was the most balanced in the franchise. She's punk and edgy but sweet and cute. Her music reflects that perfectly. You have the pretty sections with the synths and then the hardcore guitars and then the sections that go together. Like how her design mixes a more traditionally girly pink with black leather. It's these contrasting elements that perfectly blend that makes this theme so wholesome. And then the following section is my favorite. Listen. And unlike most of the tracks in this game, it's not messy or busy, it's simple in a good way. Almost pure, which is what I believe Marnie is. She's in my opinion the least obnoxious and annoying character in the game, which again contrasts with the crowd chanting in the background. It's powerful stuff. It's like the whole world is a fan of Marnie and that includes me. We all wish she was in the game more, but I'm just satisfied that instead of giving her a different theme in the finals and possibly ruining what I already liked, they just made the existing track perfect by giving her an amazing intro and a more intense atmosphere with a larger crowd. If you were to ask me in a casual setting, this is my favorite theme in the game, but the next two slots are better when I really think about it. They're in my mind the best, but in my soul, Marnie is the best. Number 2 the Slumbering Wheeled Suite. This is the most beautiful theme in the game, let alone one of the most gorgeous sounding tracks in the franchise, and it's literally in the first 30 minutes of your playthrough. It speaks to my soul. Like, dude, this is, this is heavenly. I don't even have to explain what's so good about it. Other themes could be disliked by people who don't understand Pokemon music, but this is so universally alluring. But it's not the fact that it simply slaps that puts it in the number 2 spot, it's the fact that it kicks off the leitmotif of the entire plot. This entire melody is featured whenever anything related to the legendary duo in this game appears. You have these ethereal keys making you feel like you're walking through light fog with fresh dew on the ground, while those violins surprisingly come in informing you that these grounds are a little more sacred and meaningful than you may know. It's the most atmospheric theme in the game, but then also becomes the most unique in the franchise once the wolves start howling. They use howls as an instrument. The dogs are in the forefront while the choir is in the background. This is ridiculous. You now know what's up. Almost as if you're blessed on your journey by these wolves. You encounter him right at the start of the game and I was astonished when I realized that part of the tune that we were hearing in the forest was part of the battle against these mysterious creatures. The bass is infectious, makes your legs shake, almost inducing anxiety, and wherever you encounter anything important, this theme is right there with you. It follows you. But what finally placed it in the number 2 spot was the final battle against Zacian and Zamazenta with the sword and shield as part of the music, it's both obvious but insane that they pulled it off. This track consists of weapons and canines howling. It's the most badass track in Pokemon. Not the most epic, but one of the honored bunch of themes that have meaning. It's like seeing our precious child grow up and become what they were meant to be. Our beautiful baby slumbering wield evolved into the legendary battle theme. Listen to our child reach its full potential in what is my favorite part of the entire track. The violins make so much sense now.
I'm gonna skip a bit because I already talked about the same exact melody for some time now, but after it becomes soft again with a light little piano, I think it's super cool how instead of looping properly, we have the sword just straight up cut into the track, bringing it back to the beginning. What other theme does that? That's genius. And before we move on to number one, let's talk about some honorable mentions. They're great, but there are so many awesome tracks already and I didn't want to make a top 30. The Galar Mines are so funky and clean, they're soul cleansing, it only makes me think of good vibes. The railway station is cool, I like it, it's chill, but its melody isn't my favorite. Balonly, uh, whatever it's pronounced, Balonly, 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 Balonly? is exactly what it should sound like, it's fantastic and magical, perfect for a town that looks like it was taken straight out of a fairy tale. If I rated the track solely on how much they fit their subject, this would win. The boutique theme is great, I love it, but after two A plus shop themes in a row, it's hard to put this one in the top 20 when it's simply an A. It had a lot to live up to, but it still did a great job. I wish I could put the tournament lobby in the top 20, but it's a bit too repetitive. But that's the nature of techno. Cause I, I gotta tell you guys, this is one of my favorite melodies in the entire game. Listen. Route 10, particularly the version when you're first approaching Winden, is a treat. And the X-Files vibe is appreciated. It perfectly matches the dark and snowy roots. If Route 10 was a longer track, it would have definitely been in the top 20. Hammerlock is a great tune, it's just a big disappointment for what was the city I was most excited to enter. I love Hallbury, particularly the guitar part. I love the tune it's playing. Team Yell's battle theme is far from bad, it's just not my cup of tea. I do like the melody of the synths, but they're very fleeting. It never reaches the high I wanted it to, and I never look forward to it, honestly. It fits perfectly though. Wedgehurst is amazing, it's just not my favorite uh, rendition of the Galar region theme. Spike Myth definitely could have been in the top 20 if it had a better composition. Like if it had a version that had an actual beginning and ending instead of just the same loop of what is a fantastic melody over and over again. I love it though, particularly the second to last iteration. Surchester is a personal favorite. It's one I listen to all the time and it, get, and it sets the perfect mood. It's just not the type of theme that makes the top 20. I adore it and it's an A plus for what it is, but I'm never super excited to listen to it. And finally, Storming Rose's Castle seems to be a favorite among some, but while it sounds cool, it's honestly patronizing to me. It sounds too fun at a time of tension. It sounds like a hopeful cutscene and doesn't end. What's the point of battling all the macro cosmo goons if the music sounds like I'm gonna win? It's super generic, but it does sound good. I like how it feels like you're progressing up an elevator when listening to it. It feels like you're being cheered on by your friends, but it wasn't what I was looking for at that point in the story. But the number one track was... Number one. Battle Eternatus Phase 3. That always sends shivers down my spine. Not only is it the best part of the game, but it's the most visually impressive part of the entire franchise. It completely changed my opinion on everything that was going on on screen. I now love these wolves. 
This track made me feel like I was saving the world with the bestest boys. It's about what this theme makes me feel that is important, you know? It's as if the entire region is relying on me, and the heroes that helped save the region in the past are here to help me save the region again. Everybody in the region is relying on us four, and when you hear the Gala region leitmotif, the theme you've heard in Wedgehurst, Motostoke, Winden, and will hear in Leon's theme, you really do feel like the entire game was leading up to this. While the journey to this part of the story was rocky, the actual climax was pretty well done, and the best idea they ever had was letting this music carry the experience. And I'm gonna let it do just that.